Hello, everyone. As international students, studying and living in the United States could be a new challenge for us. You may encounter culture shocks, but don't worry. We are here for you. In this video, we will provide some tips on attire, food, etiquette, where to ask for help, and some advice on being respectful of all cultures. My name is Akira, and I'll be talking about attire culture in the U.S. Different type of attires can be required for different situations while studying in the U.S. When taking courses on campus, students typically wear casual attire, such as jeans and t-shirts. When attending professional events, such as networking activities, job fairs, and job interviews, business casual and business formal are highly recommended. When doing course required presentations, business attire can be required as well. The following slides are pictures demonstrating how different type of attires look like. As you can see, casual attire typically includes jeans, open toe shoes, t-shirts, shorts, sneakers, and tank tops. Business casual attire typically includes dress pants, dress shirts, blouses. While business formal includes blazer, long dress pants or pencil skirts, and dress shoes. Keep in mind that flip-flops or sandals, athletic attire, jeans, shorts, open toe shoes, short sleeve jackets, low cut clothing are not considered business casual or business formal. There are many places that you can shop around Atlanta. Lenox Mall and Pound City Market are the two well-known ones. They both offer a variety of brands and can both be reached by Marta. For cheaper and more sustainable options, you can also go shopping at the second-hand stores Swiss stores around Atlanta. I highly recommend Buffalo Exchange and Rago Rama. They often offer trendy and in-season collections. Here I only talk about four different places, but there are so many more other options in Atlanta that are worth exploring. If you have an adventurous spirit, remember Google is your best friend. Lastly, due to ongoing pandemic, going out to shop can be daunting for many people. Don't worry, I also include some online shopping sites that can be helpful. A reliable online thrift store, ThreadUp, offers a variety of female secondhand clothing. Um, shopping centers such as Macy's and Nordstrom also have online shopping options. Moreover, if you have a specific brand in mind, simply Google and see if they offer online shopping on their website. Food is a culture and it captures so many emotions. We connect on food and if we miss home, we eat a delicious meal that we feel comforted by. Emery as such has great places for us to grab a bite at, whether it's on campus or at Emery Village or Emery Point. Some of the places we eat on campus are Docks Common Hall at the Student Center. Being graduate students, we don't have a meal plan but we can purchase Dooley Dollars from Opus $500 and it can be used for the whole year, which is two semester. So be careful and don't buy it in spring as it won't roll over for the incoming fall semester. We also have Cox Hall, which has multiple eatery and they promote farm to table concept. It's cheaper to buy food on campus if you have Dooley Dollars as you don't have to pay tax and you also get a 5% discount. On Tuesdays, we also have a farmer's market, which is right located right outside the M at Cox Hall on Ashbury Circle. Next would be Caldi's Coffee Hut, which has about three branches on campus. One is in the Queen Depot, Depot below the bridge that connects Rollins and the rest of Emory campus. And the others are located in the student center and School of Medicine. Rollins also has its very own Rollins Cafe, which serves delicious meals for lunch and quick grab-and-go snacks as well. This is located in the GCR building in the first floor or at the plaza level. However, you are not limited to eating only on campus. Emory Village, and Emory Point also have great options as well. And you can always hop on the shuttle and get your meals out of campus without having to break a sweat. 
Being a foodie myself, I'm glad Atlanta offers an array of cuisines. The best step for you is to download Yelp, an app that provides great reviews of food, as well as you can gauge the distance of the restaurant from your location. Before I go on a rant about places to eat, I have to mention Beaufort Highway. You can find amazingly well-priced Asian meals in this area and the highway is lined with numerous Asian cuisines. It is my home away from home. It also has amazing South American as well as Mexican restaurants. Another area for us to look at is Bucket. Midtown. and downtown. Emery shuttle services go to these areas except for Buckhead which only goes on weekend so you can feel safe to explore these wonderful places without breaking your wallet paying for Uber. Before I end, I would quickly like to list out my top 10 places to eat in Atlanta. Whiskey Bird which, is, which sells American tapas. Harry Bees which sells delicious, very delicious uh, Nashville hot chicken. La Maisy, Chuan food. Po Calvin, it is pricey, but it is very, very good. Antico Pizzeria, which serves Neapolitan pizza. Krog's Market, which has stalls of different kinds of food. Jenny's Ice Cream. Sapori di Napoli, which is located in downtown Tigera. A place that you must visit since they have the amazing eateries as well. Tala, Thai pop up, and it's very, very creative. And Wanton House, they have dumpling carts for lunch. It's international students, we all come from different cultural backgrounds and have varying expectations, customary codes, and experiences. As you begin to navigate this journey as a graduate student in the United States, or online from wherever you are. There are, there are a few general rules, sometimes I've spoken, that you would need to adhere to. We'll start with talking about punctuality. In some parts of the world, dinner at seven really means dinner at eight or later, but this is not usually the case in the US. It's important to be punctual to all classes, meetings, and events. Remember that time is valuable and being punctual shows a person's respect for other people's time. If you, if you would be late to any meeting, try and inform others ahead of time when possible. RSVP. This is something that's very really important and should be part of your, make it part of a, or make it a habit. So always reply to events that require RSVPing so that people would know ahead of time if you will show up. This helps event organizers to plan effectively. Also, you may be turned back or not given access to an online event if you do not do this. And finally, in terms of etiquette, so we're talking about classroom etiquette. Um, while different faculty or teaching staff have varying classroom roles, I would speak generally on some etiquettes that should be observed in the classes. For in-person classes in particular, while using your laptops, it's important to use this solely for the coursework and not for stalking the internet or checking social media pages, as this may distract those sitting around you. Answering a phone call, texting, or playing with your phone in class is considered new. During in-person or during the synchronous online classes, you are expected to participate in class discussions and be polite when addressing comments or questions asked by other people. Also, by participating in class discussion, the teaching staff gets to know you as an individual 
and this comes in handy when you need a letter of recommendation or general advice. Throughout your course, there may be moments when you have questions regarding your academics, specific courses, work opportunities, or just about anything. For all broad academic questions, your go-to person is your academic advisor or your ADAP. At any point, you can email your ADAP to fix a meeting and to discuss your concerns. The professors are also extremely approachable and generally responsive on emails. They are always open to answering any questions related to the course they are instructing or any of their research work you may be interested in. For any questions related to your part-time work, internships, CPT, OPT, traveling outside the USA once school begins, and how all of these are influenced by your visa status, you can contact your IEEE's advisor. You can email your advisor or book a meeting with them via IEEE.mre.edu website. The Office of Career Development at RSPH will be your support system while applying for internships and during the job search post-graduation. They help students perfect their resume, polish their networking and interview skills. They regularly conduct workshops and students can book office hours for any personal guidance. Emory University also provides additional resources for students, which include services like academic writing guidance, student health services, counseling and psychological services, to name a few. To access any of the resources mentioned here, you can easily find them by typing the name of the resource followed by Emory University in Google search. In essence, the U.S. is a multicultural nation, a melting pot where everyone has a perspective to share and a story from the world to tell. And so will you. Throughout your stay here, don't be a stranger. Create a home. Be confident that you belong here for your journey. Choose friends who will learn your differences and respect your culture and really try to do the same for others. Finally, you are not expected to learn it all on your own. From academic support to social tips and personal counseling, use what is made available to you and make the best of your experience navigating a new cultural environment and maybe even adopting a new language. There is always someone or something in place to help here. Asking for help and using all available resources to support your endeavors is actually respected and encouraged. So be comfortable not knowing it all Ask questions to understand. Don't be afraid to be different sometimes. And as a personal tip, be comfortable sharing parallels with your culture when you do learn something new. You'll get to stay in touch with your culture, cultivate your worldview, and you'd be surprised how much we can all relate to the different ways people around the world do similar things. If you have any other questions, don't be shy. Ask us on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you.